Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Princess Avenger W Happiness Rurigo Route. I see, wait what? Can you actually go out in the middle of the night? There was a small room adjacent to the dorm's entrance which acted similar to an apartment building's administrative office and the teachers manned it in shifts. It would definitely be questioned if she tried to come and go at strange hours. At midnight? Oh, that makes sense. The coexistence of strictness and lenience was a notable characteristic of Vonsen. Oh, she sighed and pet onto Beru's back. Oh my gosh, it's two Panda Barrows! Panda Barry looked comfortable, completely unaware of his owner's frustration. And this is where we come in to help! I'm really bothered by all of this. Yep, that's why we're helping. Oh. It appears to be serious about this, in which case, I'll help you out then. <laughs> With following Pantabaru, it would be dangerous if you tripped again, too. Having her tell me that straight to my face made me blush. I made the suggestion on impulse, but if it made her happy, then I was happy too. <laughs> I think you're thinking about this wrong way. But I like that idea. Huh? Uh, uh, no, I'll wait outside. Well, why is Vantabaru, like, you know, worried too? Why do I feel so disappointed? Was it because I wanted to try sleeping alongside them? If it were with Ruruko-san, that only made what I felt stronger. But our relationship wasn't anything like that. Well, hmm, I think waiting outside your room would make following Pantabaru easier. The way she smiled and promptly agreed with me was both a relief and a disappointment. Around what time does this usually happen? Oh yeah, the um... Uh, yeah, the, they... He just would have definitely been asleep. Two o'clock, huh? I guess I have to drink some tea myself. Uh, thank you. Oh, all your passion. Passion? <laughs> ah. I believe she had said something like that once before. I didn't quite get what she meant, but whatever the case, I didn't get a bad feeling about it. After I had my fill of the black tea, Rigo san brewed for me, 2 o'clock had drawn close at hand. Thinking out was a piece of cake since my room was on the first floor. I went out the veranda, then migrated to the location we had previously guessed Pantabaru would escape from. Before along a shadow of some sort descended down the wall, illuminated by the moonlight. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, he just... Blue? I don't know what's happening here. And the berry didn't look it, but he was incredibly agile. He swiftly made his way down to the ground, turned around, and started to run off somewhere. Is that my phone? 
My cell phone, which I put on vibrate, buzzed. Hello? I see him. Yeah, I spotted him. I'll follow him now. Roger. If we stayed in constant contact and navigated the area, she would likely be able to catch up to me. There's no need for you to rush, okay? On with the hunt! Where is this? Came upon a winding path while following the small yet nimble shadow. I never knew we had a hilly road like this on campus. Yeah, uh, we're going up some kind of mountain path. Answering in a low voice, I couldn't really tell whether Ponsonberry had noticed me or not. Do you know about it? The lodge? The lodge. We had something like that on campus? That's sponsored for you. Don't catch a code now with, with that outfit. Okay. Hunter Battery was ascending the mountain path with no hesitation in his step. I could sense he had a destination in mind, and most of all, he seemed very familiar with this trail. This must be the place he was running off to every night. I looked back, but I still couldn't see any sign of Rigo san. Wow, there was a building like this here. I wonder if everyone stayed here during summer vacation. There wasn't a soul around, it was deathly silent. Ponte Bellu's destination did not appear to be the lodge as he changed course without hesitation. Where is he going? Um, Ruriko Sa- uh... Uh, you okay? What, what the? I can hear peculiar breathing from the other end. I, I think she's like running and just out of breath. The, this voice. My appetite was suddenly stirred. I forgot about chasing after Ponte Bedroom and pushed the phone hard up to my ear. Oh, Masaya. Brad, my lower body was tingling with the anticipation. After suddenly adjusting my pants, I turned my head in confusion. Still wonder where is going on with Ruko san. Uh oh. Walking well, got to be too intense for her and she's just out of breath? If that's all it was, her voice was way too erotic. Uh, 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 um, uh, Ruriko san? Uh, kind of. No, um, are you that out of breath? I'll head your way then. I'll give you a push. It's okay. I probably had a rough idea of where Pottsbury was going now that we'd come this far, so even if I'd lost sight of him, that's just how it was. I couldn't exactly leave Ruruko san B when she sounds so short of breath. Ruruko san. A relieved smile rose to her lips. She tossed her shoulders back and her soft hair clung to her forehead. I unwittingly found myself fascinated by her red, flushed face. Uh oh yeah, uh, he turned at the lodge then kept going ahead. Uh, 
Oh, the lake. The lake? There's one of those here, too. Are, we sh are you sure we're advancing? Are you sure? Well, anyways, I'm going to, I'm going to end this episode here, everybody. Woo! It seems like there's a lake here, and yeah, some things, woo, we don't know any diddly squad of anything, it seems. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys did, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you, everybody, for watching this episode, and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye!